Do you want to learn how to professionally retouch beauty portraits? This is a step-by-step -step guide to do it. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and check other videos. This is the photo we will retouch today and if you missed it, here is the video of the photo shoot. Go check it out if you want to see more about lighting setup I used. I've created a layer to show you everything we'll be correcting. In red, you'll find marked everything that needs to be removed, while in yellow, the smaller corrections. I won't apply heavy beauty retouching, but I'll give you instruction to smooth the skin enough, and then you can decide how much. Let's start by removing this strand of hair. We have several options to do this, but the spot healing brush is definitely the one that works best. I start with a larger brush and then reduce it to remove the rest. I use a very small brush for this single hair to ensure a perfect correction. I proceed to retouch other imperfections like stray hairs or dust among them. So we are correcting everything regarding the hair, then we will see if there is anything else to do. Now let's work on skin. Here too we have many tools available, but we need to choose the ideal one based on our needs. The spot healing brush often creates wrong texture, the patch tool works perfectly in this case. I will work on a single layer as the patch tool doesn't work on separate layers. I won't use frequency separation to keep the difficulty level low, but will use it later to correct only the color spots on the skin. Once that's done, I proceed to correct smaller details with the spotty limb brush, which works well in very small portions. So far, we've used the patch tool and the spotty limb brush, simple. For many, this retouching might already be okay, so always evaluate based on your photographs. As I mentioned, to smooth out color spots, I use frequency separation. Let's see how. I create a double copy of a single layer of the image, pressing Command plus J, twice. On the first copy layer, we apply a filter. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. The value shouldn't be too low to show smaller details, but not too high to blur too much. A value of 25 works perfectly in this case. Select the second copy of the image. Go to Image, Apply Image, selecting the layer on which we apply the blur as a source. And for other settings, we apply a Subtract Blending Mode, Opacity 100, Scale 2 and Offset 128. Change the Layer Blending Mode to Linear Light. Now our photo is divided into layers, one containing color information and the other containing texture information. What we are interested in is creating a new layer between the two of which we'll use the mixer brush. Make sure to enable sampling on all layers. And now we can drag colors with small movements to blend them together, reducing blemishes on the skin due to imperfection or light. If easier, you can use the normal brush with low opacity, sampling color according to the area to edit. If the effect is too strong, we can lower the opacity or mask it only on the area of interest, which is the case. Now that I have a cleaner base, I continue with the corrections, mixing various tools, including the spot healing brush and clone stamp which in some cases I use with lower opacities, where I want to reduce the texture to match the nearby area, as in the case of dark circles. Now let's apply Dodge and Burn to further reduce blemishes on skin. We create an eye help with a curved layer combined with a black and white layer, dragging the curve downwards to make imperfection on lights more visible and, vice versa, brightening to make imperfection in shadow more visible. We create a new curves layer to lighten the dark blemishes, dragging the curve upwards and applying it in luminosity blending mode. 
We can work now on the mask with a white small brush with opacity between 10 and 30% and flow between 10 and 50%, depending on how strong and fast we want the curve application to be. We do the same thing in the opposite way, in this case darkening the lighter blemishes. This way we manage to even out the skin by working only on pixel brightness. The more precise you are, the more surprising the result will be, but it'll take a lot of time. Also, see how I can quickly correct lips and eye contours with this method. Using the same techniques showing so far with a combination of them, I continue to correct further imperfection, defining the lip contour better with the clone stamp and then creating some more dimensionality on the forehead with another dodge and burn layer to darken the skin. As a final step, I work on colors by desaturating the skin color with a hue and saturation layer to make it cooler and then applying a curve adjustment to push contrast and make the photo stand out better. This is the final result. More could have been done, but since this was an image already retouched, I didn't want to bore myself too much. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, if you have any questions let me know down below in the comments, also don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel for future videos and also keep shooting beautiful images. I'll see you in the next video, ciao!